Today is the 30th of May 2022, and today is the 15th lunar day in the 6th lunar month. And the 15th lunar day that recently passed is an important day in the Buddha Sasana. When the Lord Buddha was born, awakened, and attained to Parinibbana, in the eighth lunar day, which followed afterward, is the cremation of the Lord Buddha's body, the Atami Puja. And on the day of the Lord Buddha's Parinibbana, he gave his last teaching to establish oneself in heedfulness. And we look at the first saying, the first inspired exclamation of the Lord Buddha that he had destroyed the ridge pole. And this means that the Lord Buddha destroyed ignorance. And he tore down the rafters, destroyed the ridge pole. And the Buddha destroyed this house such, such that there would not be another house. This being lost in ignorance, this ridge pole of ignorance was completely destroyed. And in the end, the Lord Buddha had the loving kindness and compassion to teach all Buddhists, all beings, to give them the teaching on not being heedless. Because heedlessness is the way to death. And to be heedful is the way to the deathless. So we can gather all Dhamma points, all 84,000 Dhamma verses in this teaching of Upadana, attachment to the five aggregates, form, feeling, perception, formations, and consciousness, which is the arising of dukkha, suffering. And if we cut off this Upadana, then this is the path to no suffering. This is the realization of the end of suffering. In order, in order to cut off attachment, we walk this path of virtue, collectedness, and wisdom. And it's the tendency of the mind to get lost in pleasures, to have the sense of liking and wanting an affinity for being lost in pleasure, which we call craving or tanha. We have kama tanha, craving for sensuality, this liking and wanting, and then wanting to become, wanting to be, this bhava tanha, then not wanting to have, not wanting to be. And this body, we have liking for it. We get lost in the pleasure of being strong and healthy, or lost in the pleasure of having a position of authority or status. And one who doesn't know will go on being lost in this way. But one who knows about Dhamma practice will work to use what they have for benefit. Because the fully self-awakened Buddha taught to awaken oneself, to arouse oneself. Because these days and nights are constantly arising and ceasing, constantly passing by, and what are we doing with our time? The Lord Buddha taught to contemplate this, to see the degradation of all conditioned phenomenon, to see that old age, sickness, and death are normal. And so we have this liking, and we get lost, and we see that this quality of being lost it can arise in different ways. For instance, some monks follow the practice of Tudang or Dutanga, and some monks have faith in this practice of Dutanga, which typically refers to wandering uh, in stages from place to place. And perhaps they like seclusion, they walk alone on Tudang and torture the body to train in patient endurance. And sometimes the monk is in a difficult situation and a car is offered to that monk. 
And if the monk is smart, he'll give away that car in a way that's useful and be- gives benefit. But if that monk is lost, then he may consider that he's done a lot of walking already. And if he's not intelligent, he'll drive the car himself, which is not correct. This is wrong behavior. It's also against the law in Thailand. This is not the behavior of a samana, of a renunciate. So one can consider this a test. And this is an example of heedlessness. So monks need to contemplate properly because monks are a special sector of society, or special cased in society, separate from the laity. And this is marked by the monastics wearing the robes, these robes which are the victory banner of the arahants. It's something that's not easy to come by. And so perhaps we ourselves are not ordained, but we have a lot of faith. And perhaps we want these robes, want to be able to go on alms round. We have the faith and we want to practice. We want to go on alms round and eat from the alms bowl, be restrained and composed. And we see that the kamatana monk needs a kamatana. And a kamatana layperson also needs a kamatana. This word kamatana means the basis for work for our minds to develop wisdom, the work for the heart and mind, which is to cultivate samadhi, to cultivate peace, to, to be able to give respite to the mind, to still the mind. This is the training of the mind. And this is something that's not easy to do. If the mind isn't firmly established, we don't know or understand the Dhamma, then it's not easy to do. Mpucha gave a teaching, a simile about this. Mpucha taught it's like building a house. One needs material wealth and skilled workers, and one builds a beautiful house whether it's big or small, according to one's merit and energy. It's a place to rest the body. But then someone comes along and says that this house is actually no good. You have to move. You have to discard this house. Then the person who says this to us, no matter how they say it or what they say, we still have this great love for this house. We really like it, and so it's very difficult for us to move. We can see how hard it is to move out of this house. So this is a simile for the mind using the body and clinging to the body as self. And so the monks come along and teach that the body is not self. So to change this view, to let go of this view, we can see how hard is it. How hard is it to change? No matter what one says or how one phrases it to move or to change this view, it's very difficult. Another simile is as if we have a very large mountain and we try to remove that mountain to demolish it. But these rocks are very hard. And so even if we use explosives every single day. It's something that's very difficult to remove. And so this mountain, we, in our own case, is the mountain of self, the mountain of meanness. And so we try to demolish and explode the sense of self, but it takes time. And if we don't do this, if we don't try to demolish it, then the sense of self is very big. There's a lot of sense of self, and it doesn't end. It's something that's difficult to do. It's easier to remove a mountain. But we practice to do it. We can't be heedless in this. Because the Buddha taught us not to be heedless. 
in our lives. And for monastics, we practice the monastic routine and regulations, the korvat that the Krubhajans, the great teachers, have taught us. If we can't do it, then we try to do it. Sometimes it feels difficult because the defilements want other things. The kilesas have their own uh, flow. They want the mind to follow them. So we have to have patient endurance to recover ourselves, to pick up our minds, to go against the stream of the kilesas, to contemplate our morality, to contemplate and recollect the monastic rules and routine, to practice sila, whether the five, the eight, the ten, or the 227 precepts. That's something that we have to train in and practice. This is an important wealth for our hearts. We see that sila is a type of wealth. We're able to do the practice because of sila. We're able to be accepted by society, accepted into a group because of sila. We might have a little samadhi or a lot, but sila is something that we need. And so the monk without sila, without virtue, it's like a cloth that's not beautiful and degraded and falling apart. Sometimes it rips or tears. So contemplate in this way. Try to practice not to be heedless. May you set your hearts on being heedful. Because the goal that we have is these special dhammas that the noble ones have seen already. And so tonight we chanted the ten reflections for one has gone forth. And the tenth reflection is if we haven't attained to any special attainment at the end of our lives, we would feel ashamed. And if we haven't attained any special attainment, then at least we can have samadhi. And if we don't have samadhi, at least we can have virtue. Because this is something that we've volunteered ourselves to do, to become monastics. We've ordained, we're practitioners, and the faithful in society uh, bow to the monastics and pay respects. So therefore we have to set our hearts to be good. Sometimes we have studied and have a lot of knowledge already, whether we're from Thailand or from another country, we've studied to a high level, have a lot of knowledge. And so therefore we have to strive to be sincere, to be able to do it. Because this path, path that we're practicing is the way to freedom from suffering. It truly is. So may you practice speaking little, sleeping little, waking with effort. If liking or disliking arises, then know it right there. Have mindfulness not to follow these moods. And sometimes people behave in a way that's not composed and not proper. For instance, using a phone and speaking in a way that's loud and in public, speaking in a way that's not restrained. And if one speaks loudly, it can disturb the peace of others, and this is an unwholesome karma. This is using an item without restraint. This is breaking the quality of being a monk, a practicing monk. So therefore, we've entered into this special caste in society, and this is a lot of merit, something that's not easy to do. And why, why is this? It's because the lady can do whatever they want, but the monastics have the monastic regulations and rules, which is the path to freedom from suffering, this padimoka this path to liberation, path to freedom from samsara. So therefore we practice to have virtue. 
we practice this way to freedom, to have virtue which leads to samadhi, the samadhi which leads to wisdom, wisdom for the sake of freedom. And so this virtue is our foundation. In the kamatana, our meditation object, we use to train our minds to become peaceful in samadhi. And so we've sacrificed everything already. So therefore we strive to be able to see the Dhamma. And for monastics, we have sincerity. We apply our hearts. And the monks from other countries have this quality of deep sincerity. They study the Thai language, study the Vinaya. They train in making requisites like sewing robes. And some can chant the Padimokha as well. And some study Pali. For instance, studying Pali, some have realized the or past the second level of examinations. So this quality of faith and firm intent are very important. So therefore we contemplate every day these ten reflections for one who has gone forth. In the time of Lumpu Cha, it was the last thing we chanted on every Padimokha day. Lumpu Cha would have us chant those ten reflections for those who have gone forth. And he's not here now, but we still recollect these ten reflections in order to arouse our minds and hearts, to awaken our minds and hearts. So we chant, and on whether it's the 15th or 14th lunar day, we chant this ten reflections at least once in order to stir ourselves up and awaken ourselves like this. Because if we want wisdom, then we have to train in samadhi, to train in seclusion. And seclusion is for the sake of samadhi, for the sake of peace of body and speech. And if the mind isn't yet peaceful, then we have to train to press the tongue firmly to the roof of the mouth, or to cease our breathing temporarily or to say Bhutto very quickly, or Buddha Dhammo Sangho, Buddha Dhammo Sangho. And if we practice like this, then the thoughts must stop. Or we contemplate that everything's uncertain, everything's unstable, uncertain, unstable, uncertain, unstable. And we repeat this a lot. And then if we keep doing this without ceasing, one day our minds will become peaceful. And we have this quality of peacefulness and samadhi in order to realize wisdom. And this mind gathers together and the experience of Dhamma arises. We see the Dhamma. This is something that's a great miracle that enables us to let go. So this is our goal. So therefore we can't retreat, we can't give up, we can't be lazy but we really set our hearts on this and have effort and perseverance to restrain our behavior of body and speech to be within the bounds of sila, to be within the bounds of the Korawat monastic rules and regulations, and the 227 Vinaya rules as well. And then we practice in this way to the point where it becomes firm and well-established. So on this Lunar Observance Day, we practice to not sleep or to go to bed late. So may you all set your hearts on this, and for the laity as well. May you contemplate and practice to train these minds of ours to progress. And we see that this is a great merit. This is the highest merit to train in our meditation object this kamatana, which is the good work for the mind. So may you all set your hearts on this.